gentlemen, I come to you from a furnace with which nothing less than the nation we live in here in America was born. Folks, Boston, Massachusetts, here I am. I finally have a get in my life. Oh boy. A happy boy. Uh, welcome to Jury Saturday. Live from the road. Uh, this is going to be uh, the last show from the road. Uh, next Saturday, I'll be back. Okay. But I think I'm going to be joined by my little brother. That'll be the first time ever I think my little brother is involved in, in anything. Uh, it'll be very, very fun. I think you guys are really gonna, really gonna like that. Be, be, be prepared for uh, Eric Taylor Young. He's gonna bring, uh, bring the heat next week. But that's in seven days. Right now, we are here, uh, and and I'll tell you what. I really have no plan for this episode because I've been, I've been on the road since I last left you guys. I uh, flew out to Detroit. Detroit drove to Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor drove to Richmond. I'm oh, no, sorry, I stopped in Columbus, then went to Richmond, then went to Baltimore. I oh, know, sorry, then went to DC, then went to Baltimore, then I flew to Boston last night. So here I sit before you. I have a game on Tuesday. Uh, I think I talked a little bit about it uh, for, for Ubisoft. Uh, I talked about it in the morning stream. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3, they're doing a big press junket. Part of that is having an awesome go game uh, to go along with it. So we are very, very excited to help them put that on. Uh, but that's, that's, that's me stuff. You know, I, I've, I'm overly, you know, I don't know, it, it, it's somewhat shaming how much I love uh, certain fast food restaurants. And not even fast food restaurants, but also just like, uh, Things that I mean, I know I, I have a lot of friends with with taste and and money and, and class and things like that, and they they do things like go to local restaurants and have refined palates, and that's awesome, and I like doing that every once in a while. I do. I, I like especially there's sort of like barbecue. Whenever I go to a, a new state that has like a, a thing for barbecue, I'm very very excited. I want to try the local barbecue. I have, I have a sense for that. I have, I have a bit of a palate. I like what I like. I know what I don't like. I like to experience new flavors. That's fun. But also, and I'm sure somebody very, very smart would come to me and say, Justin, you know that this is all branding. That literally, if you were given a blind taste test for these certain things that, that I'm about to mention, that you would fucking have no idea what the, what the ones you love are, that you swear up and down you love, and brand X. You wouldn't be able to tell. And I think they're right. I do. But still, but still, there are two brands that I have pledged allegiance to on this trip, and I've gone out of my way to do it. The first is, is, is Dunkin' Donuts. I don't have Dunkin' Donuts in, in the West Coast. I love it. I don't know what I love about it. I've had better coffee, but for fucking one reason. And I don't know like, why this is a hard thing for people to wrap their fucking heads around on the West Coast. I don't know what frontier horse shit like, is, is just infused in their brain that they can't seem to wrap their head around, hey, have the motherfuckers behind the counter offer to put in cream and sugar to your coffee. Nobody fucking does it. Pete doesn't do it. Starbucks doesn't do it. I think like Seattle's best coffee does it. When I was in Portland, I think I went to a Seattle's best coffee and they did that. And I was like, I almost fucking kissed the person behind it. Like, and that would have been probably assault. That would have been like sexual assault if I had done that. But that's to the point I was driven when they offered to put cream and sugar in my coffee. I was blown away. I just don't fucking get why this is a, a big thing. Why this is an amazing thing and why Dunkin' Donuts is like the only major brand to say, hey, fucking give them a little spoon and we'll give them a little fucking pump squirt thing. And if people just say cream and sugar, give them two pump squirts, 
two sugars, boom, you're off. That and also, I mean, I love, and this is something I talked about on the Night Attack album, that they have their own little secret code of Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know if y'all know this. But they have their own secret code that's been around since like the fucking 70s. Earlier than that. I think it's like the 50s. Uh, that's like, you can say like sweet and light. That basically just means cream and sugar. Or like extra, extra. That means like extra cream and extra sugar. And they all know it. Like, I think it's probably one of those like bullshit things that some dude, some fucking asshole that gets hired at a Dunkin' Donuts here in Boston from Dorchester has to read a whole fucking pamphlet on the second day of work about all this secret horseshit code just because one out of every fucking 50,000 customers will come in and go like, hey, how about you fix me up a sweet and light there, fella? And he's got to know what that is. Or he's got to fucking look at somebody. Or he just, you know, I don't know what, just, we'll just fucking put the same... Right in there. And no one will fucking notice. But it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, I can get a reliable cup of coffee. I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm not going to fuck it up. I'm not going to accidentally fucking have jittery hands and put in too much cream. I'm not going to fucking put in too much sugar. That's them. They just hand me a cup of coffee that I can smuggle out in my belly. I love that. The other brand that I love, and this has also always been kind of a bit of a forbidden fruit for me since it was never around. Florida or places that I live, Wawa. Any of you motherfuckers right here, and by the way, this chat is being a total pile of shit. Um, but uh, because it's not, it's it's being stupid. Anyway, Wawa is the best. It's it's just it's amazing. I love it. Uh, for those of you not familiar with it, it's simple. And again, this is also this is like Rudy's uh, in in Texas, and I think they have a few other places. But there's like just a brilliant idea of just combining shit with a gas station. I don't know why people don't do this more. There is fucking nothing that I wouldn't love also in a gas station. Rudy's is a great barbecue place and they all have gas stations on them. That's just a great way to fucking, hey, like we're already paying for a gas station. Why don't we also just fucking build a restaurant there? That sounds like a fucking great idea. Wawa, same way. It's basically like, okay, let's do a top shelf 7-Eleven and also do subs. So they fucking wind up getting, you know, decent fucking quality sub stuff. And they're 24 hours. Most of them are 24 hours. And so they, they here's the brilliant, here's the fucking brilliant element of it. Because you would think, man, who are we going to get to make a fucking sub at 1 o'clock in the morning? It's not going to be a total pile of shit. Not to say that fucking making subs are absolute genius, right? Here's what they do. They fucking have it all on a touch screen. So you just beep, 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 boop, 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 put in your fucking sub order, and then boom, some fucking drug addict in the back who you wouldn't want to say two words to makes your fucking sub, but he ain't got no way to fuck up, man. He can take as long as he wants, ain't no pressure. All he has to do is just look at the thing and be like, okay, thing, 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 here's your sub. Literally the only words exchanged between you and the Wawa sub guy is order 245, order 245, that's it. And they all say it like that, they can stay. 245, I need that 245, thank you. Boom, you fucking get a sheet you pay for it before the sub's done. You fucking then throw the sheet at the guy, you crumple it up and fucking try to hit him right in the retina. And then you grab your sub and you fucking, and this is what happened. I ate two of these fucking subs in the last 48 hours. I ate a fucking like 12 inch sub. I hammered down a fucking, I actually, my friend, I was, I know my friend Nicole last night. She had a great term I never heard. I mawed down a fucking. 12 inch Wawa sub in my uh, in my car and I was I couldn't have been happier. Wawa. Brilliant. And again, I'm not saying that if, if somebody fucking said like, oh, well, uh, there is a fucking gas station in West Virginia that could just open up fucking available sliced meats, packaged sliced meats and put together a sub and they put that sub and a Wawa sub in front of me, didn't tell me which was which, blindfolded me, I ate both of them, and said which one I like better, probably 50-50, I like the other one better, right? 
I, and I don't know that for a fact. I'm sure somebody would tell me that and I'm sure they would be right. Fucking totally. Totally and completely, I'm sure. But is there anything wrong with fucking getting enjoyment from, from the brand? Like, I don't get it. Everybody's like, well, you know, you wouldn't, it's branding, you know. It's just something about the colors and the name that makes you uh, happy. Good! Fucking, why is that bad? Why do we always look at that like fucking, oh, well, you know. Like, okay, fine. What if there's an element of trust I have with that brand? What if I've always gone to a Wawa sub? I've had a good sub. I've had a good time. So when I see that, a part of my brain says, you trust them. You like them. They've been there for you when times are rough. When things really broke down, when you were homeless and destitute in a ditch, addicted to heroin, fucking Wawa subs was there for you. I will be there for you with a Wawa sub. What if that's going on in my head and I enjoy that? Why is that bad? Everybody talks about it like it's a fucking terrible thing. Um, all right. So there is, there is that. Uh, I, I, I always enjoy life on the road, man. I did an eight-hour drive from Columbus to, uh, Columbus to Richmond, and it was super fun, man. I, I, really, I really do like it. And uh, Now, finish Dark Force Rising. Let me tell you who's a fucking boss, all right? And I talked about it on a couple other podcasts, but I wanted to go into just a little bit more depth here because now I remember the guy's name. Um, Mark Thompson, motherfucking Mark Thompson is a boss, boss, my friend. Now I've read audiobooks. Um, I, I I enjoy listening to audiobooks being read. It, it's it's a thing. Mark Thompson has done the trilogy, the the the, the general or as our Grand Admiral Thrawn trilogy, which was a series of books that takes place after Star Wars, the original trilogy. So it has all the same Star Wars characters, Luke, Leia, Han, uh, C-3PO, R2-D2, uh, everybody. Um, he does such a fucking great job. The last two of the trilogy were just released like three months ago, and I just finished the second one. This guy's fucking great, man. And like, it's not an easy task to do voices without just trying to be those people. Like, you know, his Luke sounds, you know, in, in the neighborhood of Mark Hamill, but isn't Mark Hamill, but he just sounds like Luke. Like his Han kind of has a little bit more sort of John Wayne to it, but like that, that works. Like you just kind of get lost in it. And it, it, it's hard, it's hard to do. Like I couldn't do that book because I would just try to do a shitty Mark Hamill. I would just try to do like, yeah, it's on his face. It's like, I'm from Parker. I'm Luke Skywalker. I don't know why. That's, for some reason, that's it. Hey, Han. That's oh, you're pretty much it. Leia, why would you think to do that? I'm Luke Skywalker. It's a shitty one. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible impression. Uh, he does a great job. So here's what I would say. Uh, this is the internet. Everybody's seen fucking Star Wars. Like, Go get up into this Grand Admiral Thrawn trilogy, man. It is good. It's good shit. It's well done. A lot of really cool stuff. And, and like, it just makes you... It, it reminds you yet again that the Star Wars universe is very, very, very big. And you could do a lot of stuff that don't even focus on the Skywalkers. And don't focus on, on this other stuff. Like, here's a character, Talon Card, in, in, this, in this trilogy. I'd read a fucking bunch of shit about him. He's an interesting guy. He's a fucking, he's, you know, a bounty hunter syndicate kingpin. Uh, not bounty hunter, sorry, smuggler uh, syndicate kingpin. Uh, just fucking, you know, running his shit in the galaxy. Uh, <laughs> Gatowag, of course, pointing out that uh, my, the secret to all my impressions, that I say the character's name in every line of dialogue. And if I was only able to do that, then I would be able to read the book. <laughs> Leia, why would you do that? I'm Luke Skywalker. Well, I don't know, kid. I'm Han Solo. Uh, 
so yeah, I mean, it, it really is remarkable. And, and I don't think, I mean, no one ever fucking talks about this shit, right? Like nobody's ever, I think I'm the first person to fucking call Mark Thompson a pimp. Uh, but fuck, I want somebody to find him. If he's on Twitter, let him know that Justin R. Young went on the internet and said he was a pimp boss fucking player. Because that Grand Admiral Thrawn trilogy is fucking the tits. It's awesome. And I am very excited to listen to the, the final thing, but I'm just blown away by how good uh, he has done with those voices because it's hard, man. And then he's got to go. He's got to do Leia. He's got to do Mar Jade. He's got to do all these fucking characters. And uh, and meanwhile, a lot of them like we know what they listen, what, what they what they listen like. We we know what they sound like, you know. And uh, and yet we have to we have to deal with his interpretation. It's a great job, man. He is really, 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 really awesome. Um, okay, <laughs> black fan of, of fucking the tits, yeah. Uh, and and that's, I mean, I guess I meant fucking as kind of like a comma there, but fine. No, yeah, it's fucking the tits, man. It is. It's having a great time. Could anything be bad if it's fucking the tits? It's, it's doing great. No one's ever been frowning while fucking the tits. I'll tell you that. That's never happened. It's never been like, yeah, fucking the tits. Whatever. You're smiling, man. It's like you're on a, on a, <laughs> on a roller coaster. You're having a great time. Then you get your picture taken. Um, all right. Let's, um, God, where do you want to go from here? Uh, okay. Let, let's just go over some um, some house housekeeping. Because a lot of the reason why I want to do these podcasts or sorry, live streams to begin with was just kind of housekeeping where I could talk about the things that I'm doing um, with you guys. Because I got a lot of shit that's very disparate that really the only common denominator is me. If you guys want to be here for me, and you guys want to hear about the shit I'm doing. So here's what we, here, here we go. Uh, new podcast, going to be in the Frog Pants Network. It's called Who's the Boss? It was going to be called Big Blue Box. Then we found out there was another fucking Doctor Who podcast called Big, or Big Box uh, or Blue Box. I forget. Long story short, uh, it's now Who's the Boss, which was a name given to us by Andrew Main. Uh, and... We uh, have the first episode done. It's finished. Like, it's an actual episode. But here's the deal. I don't trust myself to publish these things. Um, oh, yeah. Le- yes, last year. Yeah, last yesterday. Yesterday? The yesterday after tomorrow? The last time yesterday happened was 24 hours ago. Hello, my name is Justin Robert Young. I'm a professional podcaster. Yesterday, I asked everybody uh, on Twitter to submit uh, announcing things. So people just saying, this is Who's the Boss? Sorry, Justin Robert Young and Ashley Paramore. Because my voice is all over the podcast and it'd be cheesy if I was like, this is Who's the Boss? Yeah. Hey, I'm your gay man. Here's Who's the Boss with Justin Robert Young and Ashley Paramore. I fucked them in the butt. Hey, you gay man. Um, yeah, so uh, the, a, a four, four mentality says jury equals Tony Danza. That's why I really liked it. I like the idea of me being the Tony Danza and her being the Angela of, uh, of, of Doctor Who um, uh, of Doctor Who commentary. So here's the deal. Consider me and Ashley, the doctors on this TARDIS. Uh, we, need a, uh, we need a companion. We need somebody that can very specifically do three things. Number one, uh, number one, create or upload this to archive, create an RSS feed, uh, and submit it to iTunes. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I guess someone to do that. I I need someone to do that uh, because not that I can't do it, it's just that I don't trust myself to do it. This is a very short-term thing because we're only going to do podcasts, I think, for uh, new episodes unless people really, really like it. In that case, we'll do more. 
Uh, but for right now, well, it's just, you know, we just need somebody to upload like seven episodes and to uh, create an RSS feed. So, um, T2, T2, uh, would Scott be able to set it up for you? The way that the frog pants thing works is we just give him an RSS feed. He puts it into the super feed and he promotes it. So he doesn't do any of the fucking other shit. I wish he did. That'd be nice if he did that. But he's also doing a billion other fucking podcasts. Um, oh, about Naked Christian. Uh, yes, I did. And Naked Christian asks, did I choose an announcer? I chose several announcers. I chose like five or six and I put it all together. Um, so you'll, you'll hear it on the first, on the first one. And, and I'm fine with switching it up. I, I like people submitting their own stuff. And I, the idea I had was that every episode you can submit uh, your, you could submit your reading of the intro uh, and then include like your favorite line from the series, like at the beginning. So it could be like, you know, fezzes are cool. This is Who's the Boss featuring Justin Robert Young and Ashley Paramore. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, if you are interested in helping me out with, uh, with this, then uh, please let me know. I would very, very, very much uh, enjoy the help and like the help and need the help because I just, I need to start pushing more of this stuff um, the technical stuff, it's just, it's, it's hard because I get into my head that I can do other things and then I stop doing it. And like with podcasts, it just, it needs to go out there. It's enough for me to schedule these things with Ashley that I just, I need to get it off my, my kind of docket. So if you're interested, email me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Uh, that is that. Now, the other thing I've been talking about, uh, me and Andrew Allen doing a Boodle Deedle Do album. That is happening. I need to do uh, temp tracks for him today. I can confirm to you that the first two uh, tracks that I was given um, were Baby I Love Your Way by uh, Peter Frampton and Elton John's Can You Feel the Love Tonight. So those will be boodled. I don't know when this would be coming out, it certainly would have to wait until I'm in, uh, until I'm back in Oakland. Um, so uh, I can put it on the good mic. But uh, yeah, so there we go. I have no idea whether this joke will last. People seem very, very excited by this album. I think it will, it will sell. Um, it will, it will, people will, uh, you know, be very, very happy to get it. I, it seems by how happy they are to hear about it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know if people are really going to want to listen to an entire fucking Boodle Deedle album. I will try to make it funny. I think that there, there are ways to make it funny, but I, I don't know. It's going to be funny. Uh, if you have suggestions, cause it's gotta be love songs. I want to do all these to be love songs. Um, you know, and I don't know, I'm curious for, to get your guys' opinion on this. What, I kind of have this fear that if I do this and people really, really like it and it becomes like a thing, then I'll be like the boodle deedle do guy. Like I'll be like William Hung. And I've had to say that I'm not the boodle deedle do guy because I am, I'm the guy who does the boodle deedle do. Um, Oh, Flying Pop-Tart Cat has, hello, is it me you're looking for? Boodle, boodle deedle, boodle do, boodle doodle deedle do, boodle doodle deedle do, boodle doodle doodle doodle, boodle 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 Um, yeah, all right, so that one's definitely in there. <laughs> do one in Spanish. There's boodling going down in doodle class. Uh, all right, so I don't know whether or not me and Andrew should be like a, a combined name. Like we should like, we as a unit doing this album should be like a, a name or it should be like Justin Robert Young and Andrew Allen. And so when people Google my name, 
they'll be like, oh, the Boodle Deedle Do album. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that we should come up with another name or do you think that we should just, I should just list it and I should just not care if like, you know, at my 10 year college reunion, people are like Googling me and, and they see the Boodle Deedle album. Uh, just Drew. Jimmy Cox. See, Black Panthers doesn't have a stage name. Um, I don't know if I want to, but Jimmy Cox is, the, that's a whole different thing. Jimmy Cox is, he only, listen, number one, Jimmy Cox would never do this because Jimmy Cox only likes two things, sucking dicks and fucking dicks. Ooh, Jimmy Cox. Face Ripper Monkey makes a very, very good point. Are you seriously worried that it's the worst thing they will see from you on the internet? No, no, certainly not. I have worse things on the internet now, you know. I guess maybe I'm, maybe I'm worrying about this for the wrong reasons. I guess for some reason I just kind of thought like, oh, this is, I'll be William Hung. I'll just be like, it'll become like popular and now that'll be the only thing anybody ever knows, uh, knows me for. It's the boodle deedle thing. But, there are worse things than to do that. I mean, that's kind of a funny thing, right? All right, so there we go. Uh, we, I'll have temp tracks. Hopefully, maybe I'll even do some this afternoon. Uh, I got to go out and, and meet some friends and everything, and then also scout this game zone at some point. But maybe I'll throw some boodle deedles together. I still got to watch Doctor Who, too. Anyway, um, has, uh, has Jimmy Cox met Neil Gaiman? Uh, I don't know. I don't think uh, Jimmy Cox is much of a reader, so... He's probably unfamiliar with Neil. Black Panther says, if you're worried about being popular, chances are it won't be. That's a good point. You want to know what? All right. So it'll be Justin Robert Young and Andrew Allen. Uh, I, I, the temp name on it is going to be uh, Boodle Deedle Devotion, an intimate evening of gibberish love songs. And uh, there we go. He's, he's already got tracks for me for, for uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight and Baby, I Love Your Way. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I think it's going to be a very, very silly thing. Speaking of silly things, yesterday I was uh, on the phone with Andrew Maine. <laughs> Black Bandit, my condition, what condition my condition is in? Boop, boop, beetle doo, boop, boop, beetle, beetle, doo, 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 doo. Um, that might be there. I don't know whether that's a, that's a love song though. Boodle Allen Young. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Boodle Allen Young actually does sound like a blues. Uh, but that, that does sound like a, like a blues singer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you one of the greatest slide guitarists of our era, Boodle Allen Young. Uh, all right. Um, I was on the phone with Andrew Maine uh, yesterday, and, and we get to talking about the the iPhone five. He of Angel Killer fame. By the way, have you heard it's doing very very well in the United Kingdom? Here's how fucking great uh, Andrew Maine's is doing in the United Kingdom. Fucking, it's literally the only thing you can talk about. And uh, he's now getting, he's now, he's now more British than he is American. He's fucking forsaken America. He's going back to the motherland. Uh, he's, he's taking up residence in a flat in London. He's only wearing bowler hats. Uh, he is, he's pretty much a, a dandy English gentleman at this point. Uh, he, he only watches Downton Abbey. It's, it's, it's an amazing transformation now that he has found his true calling as a British author. He asked me uh, if, if I had bought the iPhone 5 yet. Now, I will admit to you, everybody watching right here on Jury Saturday, I will admit to you something that I had not admitted, not only to, to Andrew, but to no one else. And I don't know whether I should, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the end. The end is I bought an iPhone 5 yesterday. 
I gazelled my old iPhone. Uh, $266 I'm going to get from it. And meanwhile, I ordered the new iPhone. That's coming to me in two to three weeks. So here's what I didn't tell Andrew and I didn't tell anybody else. And I'm only telling you, you humble folks who have made your way from all over the world to watch me here on Saturdays. I, the only thing I knew about the iPhone 5 before I bought it was listening to Tech News Today and MacBreak Weekly. I did not watch the keynote. I've read shockingly little about it. All I knew was listening to TNT and MacBreak Weekly. Now that's it's it, it, it's a bit of a uh, you know of a misleading kind of statement because I've read all about all the rumors leading up to it and as it turned out most of them were true you know we we knew it yeah all right let me go, quick tangent everybody says this is the most leaked iPhone ever the most leaked iPhone ever man okay number one all this shit was reported as rumor okay so yes if you say everything in the world as rumor and then part of those things come true, then yeah, I mean, it was, it was the most leaked iPhone ever, you know? Uh, but it's not like anybody just fucking straight up and down nailed it like they did the iPhone 4 when Gizmodo had a, a fucking physical copy of it. That, to me, would be the most leaked iPhone ever when we fucking saw the phone before it came out. Okay, so there. I would just say... Uh, you know, a face rubber monkey says, no, oh man, so for all you know, it might only work when shoved in your asshole. Yeah. I mean, that would be a very, very weird element of functionality. But yes, quite possibly. It might have to charge right up my asshole. And I would, I would be shocked by that. I would actually investigate a refund if, if that was the case. If I got it and it said, Justin, uh, here's a, fu a box made in California, Apple computers, charge only by sliding into your asshole and uh, sleeping on your side. No more sleeping on your back, folks. You gotta charge that phone right up your cheeks. Right up cheek street. Um, that's what nine pin means. Uh, so yeah, I... Um, I didn't really know a whole lot about it, but I do know this. I do know that uh, it's got LTE. That's a big deal for me because now that I have my iPhone, I fucking am just, it's boner town for me with, uh, with LTE. LTE is the tits. Love it. Fucking amazing. It is the best ever. So very, very excited about that. And also, um, you know, Andrew, I was talking to Andrew, he's like, he's like, why did you get a, why did you get this other job for financial security if you were going to do shit like buy the new iPhone? And I'm like, man, that's a fucking good point. Like, if I got extra money, what am I going to do? Fucking save it? Pay off debts? Buy a new iPhone? Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Um. <laughs> Flag Bandit, they should call LTE FTT because it's fucking the tits. Yeah, fucking the tits with lightning speed. LTE. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I bought the new iPhone and people were kind of giving me shit about it. I had a dude that was like, Oh, you had a perfectly good phone. You fucking bought a new phone. You suck, fucking Apple fanboy. That's fine, man. I'll cop to Apple fanboy. Like, I really fucking think that Apple products rule. And you want to know what? I don't think that fucking I'm alone. <laughs> I think a lot of people think they rule. And I don't think it's like, oh, well, fuck, we're all just idiots. You know? I think they're fucking good products. They're really, really good. And let me also argue, quick Continuation to my tangent. A lot of people were saying earlier this week, well, fuck it. There's no surprises anymore. You know, 
Steve Jobs, he surprised us. Tim Cook, the fuck is he doing? He's not surprising us. He's no Steve Jobs. You know, if Steve Jobs had heard about those leaks, he would have fucking sliced somebody's neck open and then left them fucking hanging off a helicopter like, a, like the fucking drug dealer in Scarface. That's what Steve Jobs would have done. Tim Cook sucks. He fucking, where's my surprises? That's what I'd like in life. A little surprises. Um, Steve Jobs was not the CEO of a company this big. Apple is the most profitable company. Not profitable. Valuable company in the world. They're more valuable than companies that fucking pump gas, which moves the, the fucking society. Gas moves society. It builds civilization. It gets us from point A to point B. If gas went away, we'd be fucked. Fucked with a capital P-H. All right? Right up the ass. You gay man. If we didn't have gas, yeah, we'd be fucked in the butt. Yeah. Um, Apple fucking is more valuable than them. Why? Because they do, they fucking happen to hit on and were right about consumer electronics coming of age and becoming a major, major, major part of not only things that we buy once every four years, but things we buy once every year, if not several times a year. At a premium price, they've done fucking great at it. Now, when you are selling consumer products on the level that they are, I would say it's nearly fucking impossible to keep a secret. Because there are industries based around the information of this industry. People will pay, it is worth it to pay somebody 500 to a thousand dollars, if not more, for a rumor about something that they heard if it's credible enough on the supply line. Pay some Chinese dude whose sister works in a fucking factory a hundred or fucking a thousand American dollars if he can provide credible evidence that they are producing a certain kind of component that goes into an Apple product, okay? That is fucking crazy. Like, and Steve Jobs had to deal with more of that as Apple got popular, but he never had to deal with this. He never had to deal specifically with this thing. And I don't know, I mean, like, it was under Steve Jobs' watch that the fucking iPhone 4 got stolen. He was still around then. And that, I would contend, is the most leaked iPhone ever. Again, I don't know why we're fucking, oh, no surprises. Fuck, what was the iPhone 4? What a fucking dude had it in his hand demoing it like i would say that's probably you know a little bit more leaked than the other one that's a get off fucking tim cook's butt he's just a dude but i think he's doing a pretty good job you know and also no one's gonna be steve jobs i mean he's that's like us saying like well fucking there, there's no edison that guy's no edison that guy's no Walt Disney. Yeah. They're fucking, you know, they're, they're just a titan. Titans of industry. People that, that are not going to be matched. They're just not. I got to say that Apple won't continue to be an amazing company. I think it will, you know. But like, you know, I think the next thing that we're going to see, it's going to be the next biggest thing that we're going to see in cell phones uh, probably won't be hardware, technically. Soundwave. I don't understand why Johnny Ive, uh, why isn't Johnny Ive on stage during keynotes now? Um, I mean, Johnny Ive was, was never always on keynotes. He was doing those videos. Uh, but he's not, like, a particularly like, you know, I don't think he's the guy who relishes being up on stage. I think he's probably as important, if not more important now than, than he was, you know, when Steve was there. Obviously, listen, he's the architect. But, uh, I forgot what I was saying. That guy's no Boodle Allen Young. 
Uh, oh, the next big thing with cell phones isn't going to be hardware. It's going to be software. We are, I would take a guess that we're close to the next, you know, like a big refresher for, for iOS. I think we are closer to that than we are. And, and we just had a big shift, you know, with all the native apps and everything. Um, but I think that we're, we're closer to that. We're, we're very, uh, I think that'll be the next, the next big thing is, is, you know, something that looks completely unrecognizable software wise than, uh, than hardware wise, because, you know, now it's like, you know, what else are we going to do? We can make better cameras, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, somebody was like, oh, well, you know, the, the screen size isn't as big as the fucking Samsung or the Note. It's like, well, I don't think that they were trying to, this isn't like a race to the fucking biggest screen size. You know, they picked the screen size that they thought was right for the iPhone, which was slightly larger than the screen size <clears throat> they had before. So, you know, I don't know. Listen, I, I'm going to defer to them. I like their products. I bought their products and, and that's going to be it. You know, so there we go. I got an iPhone 5 on the way, and, and now I think legally, I, if I just if I appear on Twit like like four or five more times by the next, you know, uh, or I mean, I I've appeared on Twit a couple times. I think I just need to do Mac break and Twit probably a couple more times, and I can write it off in my taxes. I'll just fucking pull it out and just talk about it. So you'll see, it'll be fucking like close to tax time, and I'll just be like, well, you don't know what the thing about my iPhone 5, and I'll just point at it just so I can if I ever get audited. I can just be like, look, I was talking about it. Um, all right. One more thing. Uh, I'll talk about it. Uh, oh, what color? Black. What, what am I, a drug dealer? Am I getting a white iPhone? What the fuck am I, Kesha? Get the fuck out of here. Black iPhone. Come on. It arrives in two to three weeks. We'll see. Sometimes that, that, that goes faster. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Politics. Let me play the politics song here. Hold on. What are we going to talk about, Mel? Politics, 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 politics. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Hold on. We have the Dino stinger. Let's go with the Dino. Here we go. <laughs> Gal is like a racehorse. I play her to win. Politics is brought to you by Squarespace. You know that place where you make fucking websites and shit. All right, thanks, Dean. Um, it looked like if you listened to conventional wisdom, you listened to conventional wisdom on Monday. Things were over. Beginning of the end. Done. Finished. Fanata. Coming out of the DNC. Everybody loved that Clinton speech. Uh, the trend lines for the post-convention bounce were favorable to Obama. Things looked like they were, you know, if you listen to certain people, I'm not saying I bought it, you listen to certain people, it was over. I talked to Andrew Maine a lot about politics. And one of the things that I, I always say is that things get fucked up in the Middle East in the summer for one reason. One reason only. We really need to look at heat. I would be very, very curious to see how much crazy shit happens in comparison with fucking heat. How hot it is. Shit gets hot in the Middle East. They ain't a whole lot of air conditioning. You want to fucking solve the Middle East peace process? Air conditioners. Fucking just send them every fucking air conditioner we can. Just be fucking pumping them out, sending them to everywhere. Wall units, those fucking ones that rove around like R2-D2. Fucking just put them all in their hands. That's what fucking the Middle East needs. Cool that shit down. 
Um, tensor guy, uh, Fanato. That's a, a joke. A friend of mine fucked up saying Finito once and said Fanato. And now I say it all the time because I think it's a very funny sounding word. Um, so, heat. Shit gets fucked up when it gets hot. It's hot in the Middle East now. Shit's popping off. And we go from Monday. I remember seeing there was a bunch of people tweeting out. Oh, look, there was a Romney memo telling people not to worry about the polls. There's a long way to go. They're freaking out. This is the beginning of the end. It's falling off. And then Tuesday happens. Tuesday is not the anniversary of 9-11, and, and there's some really fucked up shit that happens at the embassies in, in Egypt and, uh, and, and Libya. And specifically, a dude uh, dies. Our ambassador dies. Three other diplomats there died. That's um, it's fucked up. We haven't had an ambassador die since 1969. It's been a long time. Uh, and, and, you know, like, to dial it back from the political element right now, let me just talk about, like, if you're a state senator, right, state congressman, it's a pretty sweet life. Like, you know, you're not rich. You know, you're not crazy fucking powerful, but you're definitely like, you got lobbyists taking you out to lunch. Um, oh, 1979, sorry, not 1969, 1979. Um, you know, but you didn't fucking get a hooker. Like, there's a lot of cool things about being a state senator. If you're a U.S. senator, right, you're famous. You can go on TV, radio, whenever you want. You're fucking, you definitely got lobbyists fucking putting money in your pocket. Like, you fucking, you're never going to buy lunch. You're fucking having a good time, man. You're flying back and forth, campaigning. All you got to do is worry about being liked, you know, and also governing, or whatever. If you're an ambassador, nobody gives a fuck about you. Like, there are like maybe nine people on the planet that are like, oh, shit, man, ambassador, woo, that's awesome. Uh... I mean, like think tank people, but like, if you're the ambassador to Libya, you're doing that for two reasons. Number one, you care about that country, and number two, you care about America's role in helping it. You believe in that. You believe that America can make Libya better. And you understand the risks that are involved with it, as I'm sure he did, but you're surrounded by people who want you fucking dead. A lot of people want him fucking dead and think he's a piece of shit. He didn't need to be there. You know? But he is. And he was. And he died there. It's fucked up. It got me mad. I, terrorism stuff always gets me fucking like pro wrestling interview mad. Like I just, I get fucking worked up about it, and I started yelling and screaming at anybody who will listen, but, um, you know, that dude could have went to Libya, came back, and we would have known, not, not known him from fucking Adam, and he died, and, and that's, you know, it's just, it's hard, it's hard for me to take, and it's also hard for me to swallow the idea that all this shit is happening because of a shitty fucking YouTube video, The History of the Koran Part 1. It's just so amateurish and ridiculous and stupid. And I'm not saying that people aren't pissed about it. People are pissed about less, right? I'm saying it's fucking naive to think, uh, to think that, you know, this is just because people are fucking mad about a video. On 9-11, on the 11th anniversary of 9-11, fucking there's mortar fire on a fucking safe house because people are upset about a video? Uh, I don't know. Law 91, have I watched the video? Yeah, I have. It's stupid. It's fucking retarded. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's not, I mean, that's what, it, it's like, it, no, it's stupid. Uh, Connor Hogan says, many Libyans die daily. Yeah. Why do you think that that dude was there? That dude wasn't there 
fucking for no other reason. He was there because there's fucked up shit going down in Libya. He thinks that America could have a role in making it better. Uh, you know, it's just that simple. Uh, so, I mean, listen, I don't necessarily want to get off on a major rant here uh, about where all right, I'll say this. During the Arab Spring last summer, I thought that we should have taken more of a, I thought there was a great opportunity that America had. Um, I thought that we had a great opportunity to say America deals with democracy. First and foremost, if you are a functioning democracy, we will deal with you differently than we will other countries. And it would have given us a great opportunity to kind of redefine how we deal with with China, it would have given us a great opportunity to redefine how we deal with Russia as they kind of slowly slide uh, from the democratic perch. Um, and it would have given people who are in fucked up countries, like Connor Hogan, you know, he's saying that the point people don't get sad over certain people. I get sad over certain people. I mean, like, you know, I very much feel for for the Middle East and, and the fact that there are a lot of people there that really fucking want to live in a better version of their country, that want to be representative, that don't want to live in dictatorship. I don't fucking think that anybody wants to live in a dictatorship. I think people don't want to get killed. I think people fucking fear for their safety. I think people are uh, reluctant to change, but I think in their heart of hearts, if you could tell uh, the populace of any country that, you know, they would have a representative democracy that they would want it. I think that that's, you know, people want freedom. Inherently. Um, dictators want to live in dictatorships. That's a fucking very, very good point. Uh, so I thought that we missed we missed uh, we missed an opportunity with the Arab Spring, and, and we weren't in as close a contact with some of these governments as I think we should have been. And I I I, I do think that we our nation bears responsibility for that dude dying. I do. I think that when we have a fucking Al Qaeda flag going up in Tunisia. By the way. Fucking Tunisia, where fucking we shot the Tatooine scenes for Star Wars, never has there been a greater fucking isle of scum and villainy than the fucking U.S. Embassy, apparently now, where we're fucking, where uh, an Al-Qaeda flag was raised over our fucking embassy. Um, that's fucked up. It's not good, you know. I think, you know, it's 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 something that I think we've lost control over. To be honest with you, uh, we I think it's led by naivete. I think there's a naivete from our government that thinks that we can talk to certain elements that we can't talk to. We can talk to them when we are in a position of strength. I think we're in a position of strength right now. I think the fact that we're not in a position of strength is why this kind of shit happens. There was a report today, or uh, sorry, two two days ago, it said that uh, the the Cairo embassy they didn't permit their Marines to have bullets and their guns. I wonder why it got fucking overrun. You know, that's that's naivety to me. I don't know. I mean, I'm not running that embassy. It just kind of seems to me that maybe they should have bullets. Um. Al Qaeda is making the West and the U.S. their bitch right now. Um, you know, I, mean, I don't know if I would quite go that far, but it certainly doesn't seem like they're fucking dead now, does it? Uh, okay, okay. Lazy Dog says something that is very, very interesting. This is what I'll wrap up on. I'll wrap up jury, jury Saturday on this point. It is my belief that we cannot be who we are as Americans 
and I, I would specifically define this on three factors, economically, culturally, and militarily. We cannot have as big of a military as we have. We cannot be as pervasive as we can with our culture, which is very, very popular throughout the world. And economically, we cannot control, we, I mean, we're, we're an innovation leader on a lot of things, and we have been for a very, very long time. Um, and sexually, we're very, very sexy people. Um, thank you, Chinbeard. Uh, we cannot be economically, culturally, and militarily in the position that we are in and not be a player in foreign politics. It's impossible. If you think that we can stay out of people's ways, I would submit to you that our lack of action is an action. And historically, over the last 40 years, when we have stepped back from leadership, bad things have happened. When we have not taken the lead in foreign policy situations that affect our nation, other people who do not make as good decisions and do not have America's best interest at heart make those decisions for us. And that's not good. That's never good. It is the burden that we carry for having as big a military, as pervasive a culture, and economically being as powerful as we are. Now you could say, we shouldn't have as big of a military. That's fine. I understand that. The problem is China's got a gigantic military and Russia's got a gigantic military. And it's hard to say that we want to be weaker than those two countries. Good fences make good neighbors. Um, culturally, we can't control whether people like our our stuff. We, I mean, like I think culturally, nobody would say that we should be we should be shyer culturally. That we should modify what we do. It makes me very very uncomfortable when fucking like. <coughs> that asshole with that shitty video and we're going to blame that asshole I mean he's a fucking idiot that video sucks but you know I'm not going to blame him you do what the fuck you want you know I don't want to live in a country where we don't let people make fucking retarded videos because if we start fucking banning people who make retarded videos I'm out of a fucking job bro <laughs> it's a slippery slope that's very, very quick from let's fucking shut out the offensive shit to fucking let's not fucking let Justin make a living. Uh, and economically, listen, like we create, we, we create our own innovation. We always have and we always will. And that's a beautiful part about America is that our, our society allows, um, allows us to do it. We have. So there we go. That's what I would say. Okay, Lazy Dog says, inaction is action. War is peace. You know, that's a, a gross oversimplification of it, but I don't think it's entirely wrong. You know, uh, war may not be peace, but the specter of pushback for bad people sometimes makes bad people not do bad things. Proactively solving problems sometimes prevents larger problems from happening. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, it's not to say that we always gotta go to war, but we gotta be a leader. We gotta be a leader. I don't think we have been. How does this affect Obama and Romney politically? Who knows? I think the, number one, the, the, the inevitability talk is over. That ended, that had about a 24 hour window uh, and now that is done. What will tell the tale is whether or not we continue, whether or not shit continues to go down, to go down in clay class over the next week. If we have another week of embassy storming, this is a major issue. Or this is an issue that will define the election help to find the election. Uh, you've already started to see some of the polls slide in, in Romney's favor over the last three days, some of the rolling polls. We'll see what that, if that continues. But of course, you want to watch Ohio, Virginia, 
North Carolina, Florida. Uh, that's where you really want to pay attention to that kind of stuff. So does that affect those? Who knows? Who knows? We will keep an eye on it and uh, we will see what happens. All right. Um, <laughs> War is peace. What's next? Ignorance is strength and uh, freedom is slavery, Mr. Orwell. Uh, I mean, listen, these are complicated issues. These are very, very complicated issues. I just don't think that inaction is peace. I don't think pretending there's not a problem means there isn't one. I think that that's ignoring a potential larger problem down the road. So that's where I am on that. All right. That wraps it up for Jury Saturday. Thank you guys. Um, thank you guys uh, for all uh, going through. Uh, Scotty Roland, uh, did I pick the announcer? Yeah, I picked four announcers. Uh, they are, I, I cut it all together in one thing. You will listen to it when the thing goes up. Again, if you're interested in helping me upload and maintain a RSS feed for this Doctor Who podcast, please email me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Uh, and NSFW, oh crap, NSFW might have to be on a different day. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll find that out. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Till next time, I'm Justin Robert Young. This is Jury Saturday, and I'm imploring you that by the time the next Saturday rolls around, please don't die. Bye, y'all. See you next time.